Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a tarot deck collection. So I pulled all of my tarot decks off of my shelf and I'm going to be going through them with you. I don't feel like my collection is super big by any means. If you look up tarot deck collection on YouTube, you will find people with much bigger collections than I do. Um, they can be quite pricey, especially when you get into like the independent decks. So I haven't bought a whole ton of them. I also don't like to own a lot of decks that I don't, you know, repeatedly use. I do have some decks here that I don't use very often, but um, I have found decks that I, I really love and I always go back to. So I don't know. I don't feel like buying new decks all the time is something that I like to do. I like to spend my money on books instead. I have 12 decks to go over with you. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna spend too much time on each one. I'm just gonna kind of flip through, show you the cards, probably show you some of my favorite cards of each deck, talk a little bit about them, and then move on so that this video isn't super, super long. I also am only gonna be talking about my tarot decks, not my oracle decks. Um, I don't really have that many oracle decks. I think I have like maybe six, but um, but I didn't want this video to be super, super long. So if you want an additional video with me going over my Oracle decks, I can and will do that. Um, but in this video, I'll just be talking tarot. Okay, so I'm gonna shift the camera to look down towards my lap and I'm gonna show you the cards. Okay, so I am going to start with my basic Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, there is a lot of different versions of this deck. This is pretty, standard. Um, I learned tarot with this deck. I think this is a great starter deck. A lot of books and online resources refer to the images on this deck. So if you're wanting to learn tarot, I would highly recommend um, getting yourself a Rider Waite Smith deck. There's a ton of different versions um, or getting um, a Rider Waite Smith clone to start with. And I do have a clone, so I will show you the difference later on. Um, but this is just a basic Rider Waite Smith. I don't remember exactly what edition this is with the Starbacks, um, but this is a vintage edition. This is from the 90s. Uh, when I first started learning tarot, I just liked the color. And this one, the most, they're very vivid and bright. And yeah, so that's why I have this one. But like I said, there's many different versions with slightly different color variations, um, but all of them have the same, the same pictures. Um, so I love this deck. Again, I think it's great for learning. Um, I do think it does have its issues. Um, for one, it's very whitewashed. Um, if you look at all of the figures through the cards, they're all white folk. Um, so I do have a Rider Waite Smith clone that I do prefer that has more, <laughs> more color throughout, more diversity throughout. But um, for just like a basic deck, I do think it's pretty easy to read. Um, even if you're not familiar with tarot meanings, I think the imagery is pretty clear on like the overall tone. I do still think it requires some learning to learn symbolism of certain objects, but um, I love this deck and um, I still use it all the time. I think uh, one of my favorite cards, I love the Wheel of Fortune. I definitely look at this card anytime I get a new deck. Okay, so that was just your basic Rider Waite Smith. Um, all Rider Waite Smith decks are gonna have the same imagery, just different color variations. Um, and then one that you guys are familiar with is my Pulp Girls Tarot. Oh, I don't have a box for this one um, because it's vintage from the 90s. It was just like a cardboard box and it's been destroyed <laughs> from years of use. So this one just kind of floats around. But the Pulp Girls Tarot, this one has a nice hard clamshell case that opens like that. Um, this is considered a Rider Waite Smith clone. All of the imagery is basically the same. 
as the Rider Waite Smith deck, but you'll just see differences in uh, the characters oh, I'm being attacked by a fly. So like here's the lover's card. There's much more diversity in this deck. It's all essentially the same imagery, um, just with like slight, slight differences. But I prefer to use this deck over the Rider Waite Smith, which is why I use this a lot for my tarot game. I just like the diversity a lot better and it's just as easy to read. Death card. So yeah, you'll see they look pretty much pretty much the same. Oops, I'm going through some of the same ones. There's Will of Fortune. Two of Swords. Fool, Queen of Wands, yeah, I, I love Rider Waite Smith decks, I have a few clones, and um, I just, I like the imagery, it's what I'm used to, and um, it's the most easy for me to read. I've tried like the Crowley decks and stuff. And I just don't, I just don't vibe with it as much as I do the Rider Waite Smith. Um, okay. Dreaming Way Tarot. This is another one of my very favorite decks. I use this all the time. Um, I don't really love the backing, but I love the imagery. I do think this is considered a Rider Waite Smith clone, but the imagery is quite different. It's much more whimsical and the depictions of the cards are slightly different. And the moon. They actually look quite different to the basic Rider Waite. Oh, I'm getting attacked by flies. But I love this deck. I think it's whimsical, um, still easy for me to read. I love the art style. I don't know really what to say <laughs> other than I love this deck and it's pretty cheap on Amazon. The cardstock's good, it's flexible. But yeah, I just, I love the art style. It's so, so cute. I use this deck a lot during the spring. I don't know what it is about it, but the coloring, um, makes me think spring. Maybe it's because a lot of them have like water or greenery. They're just so cool. Love this deck so, so much. The Muse Tarot. Um, I can't remember if this is the indie version or the um, the version that's sold now on Amazon. I feel like this is probably not the indie version. Um, I can't tell by the box, but it was it started as an indie deck and then went to like mass mass publishing. I think this is mass publishing edition. Um, but I do like that it's borderless. Like these ones you have like the white borders. A lot of mine have borders. I love when it goes all the way to the edge. Um, I don't use this deck very often. I collage art isn't my favorite. I tend to like like actual drawing art style much better. But I thought this deck was really unique and really pretty. 
so I bought it. I never use it though, so I don't know if it's a deck that I'm going to end up keeping long term, but it's so, so pretty. I just don't really, <clears throat> I don't know, I haven't ever got used to the art style, and I depend on that a lot when I'm reading tarot. I mean, I know the meanings of the cards without looking at them, but I still, I still like to, to go off of the pictures and stuff like that, but it's a really cool deck, very different, um, like picture depictions than the Rider Waite Smith. Yeah, it's so beautiful, very feminine, lots of florals and flowers and I think the characters are all women or the majority of them are at least but I do like that it's diverse and um, it's definitely one of the most unique decks that I have And the backs are really pretty. And the box is beautiful. <laughs> and I love these kind of hard, hard cases. They last so much better than the cardboard ones. Um, another deck that I have had for a while that I do not use very often is the Fountain Tarot. This is a clamshell magnetic case again. All of these come with a book. And um, this one has gilded edges. Most of my cards do not, but this one has the silver edges. Um, and it's been holding up well, but again, I don't use it very often. These are the backs. Um, all of the cards were based on oil paintings that the creator uh, painted, and then now they're down in these, like, uh, you know, tarot cards. Um, but they're really, really beautiful. Again, these are not to, like, the typical Rider Waite Smith um, pictures. They're uh, very different. The artist took a lot of different, you know, um, creative, creative things with each, with each card. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, but again, I'm not used to this art style, and because of the, and because of the um, depictions being so different, um, it's just harder for me to read these because I'm not. Uh, used to the symbolism and stuff like that that this deck has um, but it's a stunning deck and I've had it for years and I've never got rid of it because I just I can't bear to part with it it's so beautiful I love this kind of art style even though it's not um, one that I'm most comfortable with really beautiful Death card. Moon. It's not stunning. This is one that I would just love art prints of. It's just so gorgeous. I really should use this deck more. Beautiful devil card. I really should use this deck more. Now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like it's that hard to read for someone who's knows tarot. Really gorgeous. So that is the Fountain Tarot. Um, this is another one of my favorite decks. It is the Clover Tarot. I bought this 
um, within my first year or two of learning tarot. I love this deck so much. This was, this is probably the most expensive deck I've ever purchased. I bought this all the way from Russia and um, it was almost 70 bucks to buy. <laughs> it's an independent deck. Um, it used to have borders like this one, um, the white borders, but I hand cut them all off. So now they're borderless. Um, I just, I don't do that often to decks, but this is one that I used all the time. I'm very comfortable with the depictions. It's not quite a Rider Waite Smith clone, but some cards kind of are. I guess it would be considered a Rider Waite Smith clone, um, but some of the depictions are quite different. Um, there is a lot of nudity in this deck, so sorry <laughs> um you won't see me using this one very often um in my like tarot games and stuff like that because there is a lot of nudity but i love the art style it's very quirky it's not um perfect like if you look closely i don't know some of the the art is weird there's a misspelled word um, on the strength card. If I come across it, I'll show you. Um, and this deck has been around for years and years and the creator has never <laughs> fixed it. Um, or at least, you know, it wasn't fixed when I bought it. It's been a few years since I purchased it. So maybe it is now, but, um, I just thought it was interesting that <laughs> it didn't get fixed. And, um, when I bought it, it was a few years old, but yeah, I love the art style. It's very quirky feels very raw and um yeah I just love it it's one of my favorites top probably top three sorry if you can hear like yard work and stuff in the background I'm out front so people are mowing lawns and doing things yeah I just love this deck so much it's a shame that I can't use it more <laughs> on camera anyway because um, because of all the nudity. Please don't flag my video. <laughs> Definitely won't be for everyone this kind of art style but I don't know, I just love it. Wheel of Fortune. I love that this is a roulette wheel. Nine of Swords. I really like this one for the Nine of Swords. That's a card that I get all the time. <laughs> this is the Devil card, they have it as Pan. All right, so that is the Clover Tarot. And I really like the book that comes with this one. It's like a full, a full book. Um, I'll show you this one. This is Soul Cards. This is quite an expensive deck too. Um, there's lots of different colors and um, they do have edging too. There's different color edges, at least there used to be. And they do have that like velvet, not velvet, but like soft touch, that soft touch feel. The backs are among my favorite and they are matte. So they're good for like pictures and stuff. Um, this deck I don't use at all. Um, this is a what's called a pip deck. So instead of like actual, instead of actual pictures of people doing things, you just have like, this is the seven of pentacles. So it literally just has seven pentacles. Um, and that's how all of the, all of the cards are. The Knight of wands is just a wand. Um, four of pentacles, four pentacles. Um, the magician is just like some of his props. So you have like a wand, um, a cup, all of that kind of stuff. Um, a pentacle. Yeah. 
so not the easiest to read you definitely i feel like pip decks like this you really need to have a lot of knowledge of the tarot um, otherwise you're going to really struggle because you're just going to look at this and not really have anything to go off of on the uh, picture wise but it's a really cool deck i love the gold the imagery is really beautiful. Um, again, great for pictures. I use this a lot on Instagram um, when I used to have a tarot account. And um, yeah, it's really pretty. I But because I don't ever use this for anything, um, I originally had put like book prompts on each card. And this was my deck that I originally used for my Tarot Picks My TBR game, except instead of like going over meanings and stuff, I just had book prompts attached. Um, obviously now I don't do that. I prefer to go over meanings and stuff as opposed to just like book prompts, set book prompts, but um, I do still have the deck and I've never taken the stickers off that I put on there and uh, yeah, but I do like the deck a lot. It's just not the easiest to read. I prefer pictures over this pip style. Okay, and then I have the Night Sun Tarot. This one is much more um, in the style of like Aleister Crowley decks. It does have a little bit of a Rider Waite Smith vibe, but it's much more uh, symbol heavy, uh, alchemist heavy. If you're familiar with the difference between a Thoth deck and a Rider Waite Smith deck, you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, again, this is one that I don't use very often because the symbolism isn't one I'm used to. Um, but it does have still all of the same cards. It's a much darker deck. Um, much more in like a horror style. There is a lot of nudity in this one as well. So not the greatest to use for YouTube, but um, I wanted a really dark deck like this. Um, one that was more of like a dark occult style. So I keep it even though I never use it. Whoops, what is that? Oh, and these are the backs. Oh, this is like the, um, they come with little, just like blank cards. I've taken out most of them. There's the tower. This is death. I love this depiction of death being a pregnant, person because with death um, comes new life. Death is more symbolic of rebirth, not actual death. Justice. Yeah, it's a really cool deck. Just, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit scary. <laughs> so I don't use it a lot for like personal readings, but this would probably be fun for my tarot game, but definitely more um, occult vibes, you know? Really cool imagery though. Like, look at that. That's so cool. So that is the Night Sun Tarot. Um, let's go through these big ones. So I have, if you're familiar with the Raven Cycle by, which is a series of books by Maggie Stiefvater, um, she created a tarot deck to go along with the a book series. I have never actually read the book series and I didn't know that until after I purchased these uh, tarot cards that it came or that it was uh, inspired by um, 
her book series. Um, but I love the uh, book that comes with this instead of just a little white one. You have this big full, full uh, page book of all of the meanings and um, they're very clear and stuff in here. I really like when ducks come with this, although storage wise, you know, they come in like this big box, but, but the book is definitely helpful. That one's a really good one. Um, I started to take the borders off of this one because they're like these bright orange ones that I don't really love, um, but it's a lot of work and I stopped after a few cards. So um, I need to get back to it <laughs> um, so that I could actually use this deck because they shuffle weird when you just have a few that are smaller than all of the rest. Um, but the backs are super cool. I love the backs on this. You have the pentacles, cups, swords, and wands, and then the infinity symbol. Um, I love the backs of these so, so much. I kind of want to get a tattoo of this. Anyway, here's the cards. Definitely different than all of my other decks. Artists took, um, you know, liberties with the interpretations of the cards. I mean, they all mean the same thing, but just like the, the art representation style. Again, not the easiest to read for a beginner, but really beautiful art style. Look at that. Stunning. I love these. But this is another deck that I just, I never use. I was hoping by taking the borders off that I would use it more, but it's just so much work. And, um, you know, at three, I stopped. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Lots of ravens and feathers. And I feel like it would make a great fall deck just because of the colors and the vibe of it. I really should use some of these more. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hermit card, Nine of Swords. That's a really interesting version of the Nine of Swords. Wands, the star. Oh, that's so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so that is the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. And then we have my, one of my favorite decks, which is the Everyday Witch Tarot. Um, I learned on this deck alongside the original Rider Waite Smith deck. So this one is super easy for me to read a lot of times when I'm reading with other tarots or with other tarot decks. Um, I will picture the images from this deck in my mind just because I learned on it. Um, I really like the backs. It's really cute. It's very whimsical. It's very lighthearted. So um, I think this deck is great for like more serious questions and like personal use because it's not too scary the imagery isn't too daunting of course they mean all the same things but I don't know I feel the imagery is just a bit more approachable and not as scary um, all of the characters in them are or most of them are witches or you know warlock type people <laughs> Um, yeah, I like the art style. This is kind of typical of, well, I guess the art is by Elizabeth Alba, but Deborah Blake, um, I don't know if she uses this artist a lot, but a lot of Deborah Blake decks kind of have this 
this cartoony, lighthearted feel. And I use this one any time of year. I just love it. It's super easy for me to read. Um, I guess this would be considered like a Rider Waite Smith clone, but there is some differences with some of the cards on like the interpretation of how sh they should be depicted, but like this one. Um, but a lot of them are similar or similar enough that I think it's still considered a clone. Such a cute deck. The moon. Death card. Strength. Lovers. Yeah. Wheel of Fortune. Such a fun deck. Really, really fun. So again, that's the Everyday Witch. And this one comes with a full book like this one does, but I don't have it in here. I must have it on my bookshelf, but it does come with a full book. Oh, it's right here. I took it out. Yeah, so it comes with like full color pages. Um, and then like a little note section where you can even like write down any notes. Great for learning. I never wrote in it, but super helpful. All right, last two decks. The Buffy Tarot. Kelsey was nice enough to send me this one off of my wish list. So thank you, Kelsey. I've never actually used it though. But it's super fun if you're a Buffy fan to kind of look. It's I think it's still in order. Yeah, I've never even shuffled it. Um, if you're a fan of Buffy, I think you'll get a kick out of the choices that they made for like who goes to what card and that kind of stuff. I'm sorry if the yard work is loud. Hopefully you, it's not bothersome. Giles as the Hierophant. I love this lover's card, Willow and Tara. Um, being attacked by flies. Death card is these three guys. The devil. I like this one as the tower. I don't think the art style is my favorite on this. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of blocky a little bit. Um, yeah, the art style in this isn't my favorite, but I love Buffy and um, I just had to have this deck and uh, it probably would have been a while before I bought it for myself. Um, so thank you, Kelsey, for buying it for me. That's so good. I think they made a lot of good choices for the characters and stuff. Those are the backs. I don't think I showed them. Really cool backs. The uh, cardstock is pretty good too. They're nice and bendy.
All right, and that is the Buffy Tarot. And this one comes with a pretty good book too. Not a lot in as far as descriptions go, but looks nice. It has enough. And then last but not least, the Halloween Tarot. Um, I just bought this tarot, so this is the newest uh, deck in my collection. And I'm very excited to start using this. I'm gonna be using this deck um, in October for my game. Couple cards. <clears throat> These are the backs. I'm obsessed with them, aren't they? So freaking cute. And then these are the cards. Um, I have already shuffled them. They had a very strong smell, like a chemical smell when I first opened them. So I left them out. I shuffled through them and left them out to kind of air out. Um, but I love the artwork. It's so cute. Um, they did change the names down here. So instead of cups, pentacles, wand, swords, it's ghosts. Um, I don't know, ghosts and skulls or something else. Um, we'll go through and see. Pumpkins, ghost pumpkins. Look at how cute. Oh my gosh. This is what I would consider a clone. Um, some of the depictions are set up just a little bit different, but still have a lot of the same symbolism as your right of Smith. <clears throat> so ghosts would be cups. Um, pumpkins would be pentacles. <clears throat> Hi, Priestess. Bats are swords. So cute. And imps are wands. Still has the wands there too, just also imps. Aw, the Nine of Swords is the Nine of Bats. The Magician. Oh, I love this one so much. It's an actual magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> I love it. The Three of Ghosts is Three of Cups. Oh, I'm just, I'm so obsessed. I'm so obsessed. Look at how cute. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. I'm never going to want to stop using this deck. <laughs> it's so cute. I love the art style. Oh my gosh. The hermit. Oh, I like how he's a little scientist guy. <clears throat> Page of swords. The sun, oh, that's a really cool one. Yeah, I love this deck so, so much already and I've never even used it yet. Uh, yeah, I thought I wanted a Halloween deck just cause I, I wanted, I've been wanting to like change up decks as I'm using them for my Tarot Picks My TBR game and have like seasonal ones that I go for every season. And this would obviously be Halloween season, but I might have to use this one year round because I am just, <laughs> I love it so much. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I want some prints of some of these. So cute. Oh my gosh, that's such a cute hanged man. I love the pumpkins. Oh, that's a cool death card. And he's gardening, like rebirth. Oh my gosh. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so this is the Halloween tarot. All right, so this is it. That is all my decks. If you have any questions or want 
um, a more comprehensive uh, flip through of any of the decks, let me know and maybe I'll put it up on the Discord or make a private video or something. I don't know, because I don't know how much um, intrigue there will be for more tarot specific content, but it is a love of mine. So um, I like having some tarot content on my channel. Um, okay, so thanks so much for watching guys. Again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will have um, links to all of my socials and all of the decks that I showed. All of these I will have links if they are still available. Um, so that you can ha find them easily if you are interested in buying any of these or just checking out the artist or anything like that. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you on my next video. Bye!